right, we're doing something new for 2022. I got the, you know, I usually go against the blinds and I'm going sideways. I feel so dirty. I just feel dirty. You know, this is, look at the plant now. You can see the plant better too. This is fake, by the way. And I don't water it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find good fake water, if you know, in the comments where I could get that. Reminds me of the, um, that are you, if you're, I mean, I don't know, I'm old as the hills, but that, that laughing with, you know, very interesting guy a little bit. Maybe I'll find a clip of that and I'll throw it in. Anyway, so today we're doing a drum cover. A drum cover. Actually, I'm not doing it today. I'm just filming this part today. A drum cover. I don't, I haven't done drum covers. And I've had a few people ask me, do a drum cover, do a drum cover, but I didn't want to do a drum cover. Because a lot of people do it. And I didn't know what it would get me, or even if YouTube would let me, and all that kind of stuff. And now I don't so much care about any money I get off a of video, because I'm not making any, any anyway. I just really would like you to support the channel by buying the hoodies or the t-shirts if you like what we're doing. You know, we've got a couple of, uh, we've had a, we got more cool guests coming up and all that kind of thing. Um, some stuff I'm working on, hopefully it'll come through. Anyway, so I wanted to make this a little bit about learning. About learning. So I didn't set up like my full kit when I don't have the room where I live and all that kind of thing. And that was a concession. That was one of the reasons I didn't do a drum cover. And I didn't, I didn't go crazy with, you know, lighting and cameras. I'm not doing that. What I wanted to show you is something that um, Steve Gadd once said in a clinic. And I'll tell you a quick story. It's a little Buddy Rich story. Uh, I studied from Joe Casadas in New York. Um, he was, uh, he played a little bit with Oscar Peterson and he was a big teacher in New York and he really taught the um, jazz techniques. And he was good friends with Buddy Rich. And I got to go and, and hang out with Buddy a couple times and I got to get, uh, go on his bus. And I was at one of the first shows he played with a Ludwig kit instead of Slingelin. He didn't have Slingelin with him, he had Ludwig. And uh, I asked him, uh, said, hey buddy, I noticed you switched to, um, to Ludwig. And uh, he said, yeah, they pay me more. And then he said this to me. We were sitting, we were sitting in the, on the bus and he wanted me to show him his role because I, I, Joe told me I had a good role. And he liked it. He commented me on my double strokes and all that kind of stuff. And I played much more traditional grip back then than I do now. Uh, but he said, know this. It's never the equipment. It's always the player. I'm going to say it again. It's never the equipment. It's always the player. And that is a very true thing. Gad said something similar. He talked about not getting caught up in the studio about having a certain snare or having a certain symbol with them or anything like that. He kind of played what was ever in the studio. And there are rumors, and there's an interview that I read in, in I think, a drum magazine where he talks about playing cracked cymbals and broken snares and whatever was in the room, because he, he was going from session to session to session, and he just didn't have time to bring stuff with him. So whatever was there, and it would make him rethink sometimes what he should do on the tune, because of the stuff he had available to play. And I adopted this philosophy uh, in how I approach things. I'm, I'm not very particular in drum sets that I play on when I go to jams or anything like that, and uh, bring in my own stuff or anything like that. I'm not very particular. Uh, I try to play what's in front of me and I try to make it good. And this has been to my credit. Um, you know, I can play uh, to some extent right-handed. I'm definitely not, I'm a lefty. I don't play as well lefty, but I can play on to some extent right-handed. So a lot of times I go to jams, I'll just sit down on a righty kit and play the jam because I don't want to change the stuff. And I want to get used to playing that way. And, and this is what I did here. I took my practice kit. One cracked pasty ride. It's not even a ride, it's crash. But it's cracked, so it sounds a little more like a ride. And my little yellow jazz kit. And I don't even really like the way the, the bass drum pedal and the, the bass drum head interact. Because that little lip on the little 18-inch bass drum. I'm not even a big fan of that. I feel like it hinders the bass drum a little bit. But I wanted to play, I'm going to play a, a Dancing in the Volcanoes. It's a Genesis tune Phil Collins played on. It's a tough tune. It's mostly in seven. Uh, there are some bars of four and bars of three here and there. 
but it's mostly in 7.8 and 7.4, those two meters it goes back and forth in. And uh, there's even a couple of things in, I think, 11.16 or something like that. But, um, and I, I did play in a Genesis tribute band, so I do have a little bit of experience with this tune. I did have to refresh my memory and go over it again, but I didn't go over it a ton. And Phil Collins, when you listen to him, he does a lot of playing around on this tune. So I am not going to play an exact match cover. And I don't want you to think I'm going to do that. I don't want you to denigrate me for that. I'm not going to. I'm going to play the essence of what Phil did. I'm going to play the grooves that Phil did. I'm going to play the very important fills that of fills that Phil did. That's funny. It's F-I-L-L and P-H-I-L in the same sentence. Like what I did there. Um, but I'm not going to give you an exact, like note for note, because I would venture to guess that if Phil did a second or a third take, or a fourth take, or whatever take we got recorded, and we don't know, I don't know how many takes they did on this, uh, I would venture to guess that he would not play it exactly the same way. Probably the grooves would be the same, and some of the really important fills would be the same, but overall, I think he would do everything a little bit differently. So I am going to play, and this is something else I want to teach. I know some of the Phil Collins um, idiosyncrasies. He likes big Tom fills. He likes triplet things. He likes playing triplets over uh, you know, a straight eighth pattern. He likes doing that kind of stuff. So I am going to do things that are Phil-esque. I'm going to do things that are like what Phil Collins would do. However, I'm not going to be no for note. Some of it will be. The grooves will pretty much be no for note. But I am not going to do things exactly like Phil where I chart it out and note for note for note for note. It's going to be the essence of Phil. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a really fun song. Uh, you know, if you want me to do more of this, I will. If you don't, put it in the comments. Say, you know, we'd rather hear you do note for note. And maybe I'll try to do note for note. I don't know. Note for note takes a long time. And like I said, Phil doesn't do a note for note. When he does it live, he's not playing every single fill that Phil did. I like doing that. I don't know why. Uh, in the live shows, right? He's not, he wasn't doing that. He was giving the essence, the very important things of the tune. And, and, but nobody ever left a Genesis show thinking, oh, I wish Phil had done that one fill he did uh, on the record. Nobody ever left that because I'm sure if it was a very important important thing that he did, he would have covered it in the live show. So that's what I'm going to do. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to do that 80-20 drummer thing again, and we're going to go right to the my, my practice room, and we're going to try it. Here we go. Okay, folks, first drum cover. Hope we do it justice. Old Genesis tune, as we said before. Uh, dance on the volcano or in the volcano. I kind of... here we go.
Was it close? I don't know. I don't know. Put your comments on the bottom. I don't want to take it again. I don't want to take it 90 times. That's about the fourth time I took it today. I don't want to take it 90 times. I just want you to see. Close or not close? Close or not close? All right. Thank you.